Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Maputo Protocol Street Podcast brought to you by the Partnership of Equality Now, the Solidarity of African Women's Rights, and the Capital Group. I'm your host, Sandra Marondo, and today we're diving deep into the vibrant heartbeat of the Maputo Protocol as it celebrates its 20th anniversary. Now, some of you might be wondering, what in the world is the Maputo Protocol? Well, buckle up because we're about to unravel it. The Maputo Protocol, formerly known as the Protocol to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights on the Rights of Women in Africa, is more than just a mouthful. So, let me simplify it for you. It's a set of rules, a guiding light that 49 out of the 54 African countries, including Kenya, have embraced to pave the way for women's rights. But hey, we're not here to throw around legal jargon. We hit the streets of Nairobi, eager to hear what the incredible women and men of Kenya think about these rights. And believe me, the responses were as diverse as a city itself. Some thought-provoking, others, well, let's just say a tad controversial. Join us as we navigate these bustling streets, catching the pulse of these powerful narratives. Are you ready for the ride? So fasten your seatbelts, folks. This is the Maputo Protocol Street Podcast, where the streets talk and we listen. Let's dive in and uncover the untold stories that make the Maputo Protocol more than just a legal document. It's a living, breathing testament to the resilience, strength, and aspirations of African women and men. Stay tuned. A very, very, very good morning to you. As you can see, we are in the streets of Nairobi. This is a Maputo Protocol Street Podcast. My name is Sandra Marondo, and you are? I'm Mary Kimemia. I work with Equality Now in the Legal Equality Program. Okay, so um, could you tell us a little bit more about the Maputo Protocol podcast? Sure. So the Maputo Protocol is a very interesting um, document. It's an international law document. It's the most progressive um, international instrument that focuses on the rights and the protection of women and girls. But it's more special because it primarily focuses on the African context. Okay. So it's very unique in that it responds to issues and areas that are very uniquely African. And so one of them being the right to inheritance, widow's rights, um, a very sensitive one being um, right to reproductive health and reproductive services. So it's arguably the most progressive women's rights instrument globally to the point where we see the West oftentimes relying and trying to learn and borrow from the protocol. Because a lot of people would ask, what's the point of having the Maputo Protocol when you have the CEDO and all these other um, international law instruments that protect women and girls. But with Maputo, it's special because it's uniquely African. It responds specifically to the rights and the needs of African women and girls. I mean, I think we'll stop, we'll stop pushing for it when women and girls have an equal opportunity, have equal access, um, have equal rights. Because we, it's true, we have been having this conversation for decades. And an example is this year, the Maputo Protocol celebrated 20 years of existence. So you'd imagine a, a law that celebrated globally, 20 years old, we'd have not, we'd wash our hands, close shop, and be like, yeah. we've done it. One stop shop, it's yeah, done. We're done, yeah. we're good. But we see that even now, even in the year of the Lord, 2023, <laughs> women and girls are still marginalized. Women and girls still don't have access to the most basic needs such as sanitary towels, um, women are still being passed over for employment opportunities even where at times they're even more qualified by their male counterparts. Yeah. We still see that within the African continent and I, I think one of the oldest countries should be almost 70 years, right? How many Africa, how many women presidents have we had? How many women prime ministers have we had? If we look at our parliaments, how many women do we have? Have we, can we say that we have countries that even have 50%, right? So I think 
we'll stop having these conversations when we feel that women and girls can now exist and enjoy life at an equal level um, as our male counterparts. So today we decided to come to the streets, get to hear uh, different opinions from the common Wananchi, and we have our first guest. His name is Emmanuel. Can you introduce yourself to the public? Well, uh, thank you. My name is Emmanuel Magoba. I am a political science student. Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting seeing this conversation uh, taking place especially in the streets, yeah. where, of course, you meet people with, uh, I guess, independent opinion. Yeah. I'm really happy to be here with you people, okay. to at least have this conversation. Okay. To start with, have you ever heard of the Maputo Protocol before today? Well, uh, yes. You I have? first heard it uh, in someone's speech, Pielo Lumumba. Ah. I think he was speaking on something and he mentioned about African countries signing a number of protocols and Maputo was one of it. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. really cool. Usha is kiaku su Maputo protocol? No, today is kiaku. Before today, Usha is kiaku su Maputo protocol? Apana? Yeah, I've heard it and the work that they are doing is mm. nice. For them to empower women in our society, it's a good thing. Mm. Have you ever mm. heard of it before? No. And Do you think there is a thing like we are talking about women too much? It depends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because Actually, when we talk on uh, about leadership and everything, there is a way in which, at point, we talk about women too much. Mm -hmm. The feminist ideas and everything. Personally, I don't buy the idea of feminism because I believe that we are all born and endowed with our uh, inalienable rights. Okay. I mean, we all enjoy rights to life. We all enjoy rights to food and all those rights. So. But talking of leadership, I feel like we have to put our women at almost equal shares to be able to champion for these rights and allow them go for these spaces just the same same as we men take part in those initiatives. But there's something interesting you've said, uh -huh. um, that we all have the same rights, we yeah. all mm. are entitled to the same rights. Yeah. But would you say we all access and enjoy those rights on an way. equal measure. Actually, these rights are accessible to all of us. Are they though? Are they? Which one is not? A lot of times, especially in um, the, the rural areas or the poorest parts of the country, would you say that a daughter of the home would be taken to school instead of the son of the home? And that's why I say that uh, Maputo Protocol is well welcomed in a number of African states. And I started by saying that all along our women have been neglected. I mean, there has been a discrimination of nature whereby our women were not allowed to freely access the education and even political positions. And that's why uh, coming up with an, a union or rather an agreement that champions for this idea is actually embraced. Yes. But we just need to, to make it 50-50 as I said so that we won't, ha uh, we won't be having empowered women and unempowered men. That won't be equality. And I hope you are also uh, championing for equality. Like, like, it's a bit challenging, you know? Like, as much as what one empower my team, sana. Mm. Like, for boy child, or am become a neglected pandemic. Mm. Now, for me, I know in any universe, in anything for people to achieve more, lazima kuwena kituka balance, you know? So like, ni kama mova do to sana. Boy child kwa society wana mchukulia kama, like, ni kama the, the head, obvious, it's the head, you know? So like, many things, pressure iko kwake. So, kuna venye umneza inact, to hiyo pressure kiasi, enyana go through, you know? Through these things, like even right now, if I can say, like, kuna, kam, kuna 
organization ngapi zimekama for by virtual siezi siezi mention hata 10 hata 5 si dan cuz ona chukuli ona ume they can sort them self mm. out kifika mm. mali tuna agrika society men and women are equal yes. utaanza kuona hizo mm. ni what tunaita hizo intersectionality mm. utaanza kuona mm. venye hizo vitu vinaanza kushikana yeah. mm. such that ikifika mali tukisimama tuk, tuk, hapa tunaona tuko equal not the same tuko equal kila mtu akona equal responsibilities mm. equal rights equal access and how we start working towards that ni women and men are viewed equally wakona equal access wakona equal opportunities wakona equal rights so when is it gonna happen is all talk it's already happening this is it <laughs> The Maputo Protocol, which was adopted in Maputo, Mozambique, is considered one of the most progressive and comprehensive women's rights instruments in the world. It recognizes a myriad of rights for women and girls, including reproductive health and rights, protection from discrimination and all forms of violence, economic rights, social cultural rights, access to justice and political rights, among others. Kenya has ratified the Maputo Protocol, so we sought to establish whether Kenya has made this right a reality. Speaking of, we have a couple of questions here. We'd like you to pick one or a couple, read it out loud, and give your honest opinion or answer. Basically, your thoughts on it. Now, this is not mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me pick one for you then. Have you ever been denied a job or forced to quit because you are pregnant? No. 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 Have you heard of anyone who's had that kind of experience? Yeah. So there's this friend of mine. She's she's in campus right now, second year. Uh, she was applying. Okay. She, she worked at what it? At a certain company where they sell clothes, and uh, unfortunately, by good or bad luck, she got pregnant, and. Uh, the girl had no parents, neither husband. So, and the company's manager told her to just be the job because she could not manage. So the girl was, she was like, no, I can do it. And the manager was like, no, you can't. So she was forced to quit it. Did she know it was illegal to start with, to be forced to quit because of pregnancy? Uh, no, I guess she wasn't empowered. Uh, so she had no idea if it's legal or illegal, mm. so she just quit it. So the Maputo Protocol is uh, it's an African it's an African international instrument that seeks to protect women and girls in Africa. It's a very unique context and focus in Africa. So in the Maputo Protocol, Kenya is a party. Kenya is bound by the Maputo Protocol. And in Article 13 of the protocol, in the protocol, under Article 13, it guarantees um, women's equal opportunity to um, economic and social protection. And one of them is being protected from discrimination on the basis of your pregnancy. But even in Kenya, looking now inwardly, the constitution under Article 27 protects women and it protects girls, women and girls from being discriminated because that one was discrimination where you're being fired or being asked to quit a job because you're pregnant and so that's actually a violation of the law in terms of the constitution but also the employment act ushaik was shamed because of having periods mixed up boys and girls say yeah, Government, like seeing any trust, condom on our ni free. Pads in his first way free. Konzoke and a child to Nazionanga. When you open a lever, they want to me at a pad, Juana, you know, to me at tissue, and if I equal free, Kwao, Sua Kenda, my demo, and I'm at two free like condom. When it comes to periods, what are your thoughts? Come on, I got to go to Likua to Nangopa. 
kama wakati wetu tulikuwa tunaogopa we are in darkness but nowadays at least tunao enlighten na wa enlighten paki wali kwa wana kama wakati huu wakipata like my daughter wakati alianza it was like but like it's you are there like a mother to make your daughter mwambie hii ni kitu ni neri sana cha ni no more alikuwa like amekonjeka amekonjeka ada hawezi toka nje baby is what aibu aibu hata ndio kutoka nyumba sasa as a mother na writer na mambo this is normal for every woman ni nini inakuwa shanga sana when it comes to ukifikiria ai kwa msichana hii Kenya mm si poa ile life yenyewe sana unapitia ngana mashinda ni ngumu sana mmoja kuna ile style yenye kama for example kuna yenye wanaendanga MP na nado ya kunini ya kum ya kubai pads ni ngumu labda kuna single parent na labda ni ni baba sasa ni ngumu kumwambia dadi ni baie hii ni baie hii umeona sana ni ngumu like me niko na single parent na babangu sasa umeona mikoa mdogo nilikuwa nashinda kumwambia dadi ni mwanza period ni baie pads uli navigate tu niko naambia auntie yangu hivyo sasa bado nasikia aibu ile na uki 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 sikia gumu kuuliza dad akubaye pads uliko nasikia ugumu juu na feel embarrassed ama juu na feel haizi understand hata ile wa embarrassed ile embarrassed shai jipata kwa scenario enye a man was hired where you lost a job or you lost an opportunity alafu mwanaume akaekwa mbele yako yet you equally capable nyinyi wote mko na degree ilikuwa like okay shule ya wakiajiri walimu wanaona like kuna preferences so kama ni ni chance ni chance ya wote napata kuwa kuna na vile wana they favor the men such that kama mko wawili amani and dadi ndio mwanaume ndiye atachukuliwa regardless of the quality so here is a nifanyikia sikia baya sana kwa sababu like sisi ndio alikuwa better than kwa maputo protocol iko na articles hizo specific laws so kuna moja yenye inaongelelea equal um, economic and social welfare na moja wazo ni equal access to employment na inasema mwanamke na mwanamume wanafaa wapewe equal opportunity na pia tukikuja nyumbani tukiangalia context ya Kenya the employment act also speaks to this and the constitution constitution inasemanga akufai kukuwa na instance and article 27 mali mwanamke wana ametitiwa tofauti ama less than mm. kwa sababu ya kukuwa mwanamke so next time hiyo kitu kikufanyikia unawaambia you know the law unajua mm. sheria Mm. na hivyo venye wanafanya kisheria mm. haikubaliki si ndio na hivyo venye tumesema na hiyo preference ya wanaume, wanaume over men pale umeandikwa kuna instances where your male colleague analipwa more kukuliko mm. ah, ndio wao inafanyika hivyo mali nafanya kazi men huwa wanalipwa pesa nyingi wewe ama any of your female colleagues kuna mtu amewahi jaribu ku approach director wa shule ambe eh tume notice James pale tuko sisi wawili tunafundisha PP1 class yake iko na student study niko na student study pia mimi niko na BA yako na BA mm. lakini James analipwa 50 na mimi mnanilipa 25 okay mara nyingi vile wewe inafanyika kwa private salary huko inakuwa ni wewe na mwajiri mm. so in case uende u raise something like that and the obvious ni watakufuta tu mm. sababu anasema tuli discuss na wewe vile ulikuja kuulizia kazi so mm. it must remain between you and you ushai pitia any form of gender based violence ama unajua mtu mwenye ashai pitia mm sijai pitia mm. eh uh, eh my friend mm. tulikuwa friendship nao same area So alikuwa na sasa tulikuwa tulu age 17 hapo tulikuwa the same age alikuwa na huyu boyfriend alikuwa almost 20 years 
si yo boyfriend ile mwenye sasa tuko tuna si bado tuko shule anamkazia oh ile waende wafanye sex na yule dem anakuja ananiambia huyu boy anasema tumeni tufanye sex na mwambie hiyo ni bado yule dem mjo sasa bila anampenda anasema oh yeye anataka sasa kuna day day alienda kwake kumtembelea yule boy alimreplink sasa alimrep sasa angeweza kuambia mama yake juu angeweza kuambia mama yake juu alikuwa anapenda yule boy sasa atakia shikwe akenanga tu hivyo home nzuri hapo atanga ball ilikuwa favor kwa tanga ball lakini hiyo kitu alibaki ingetoa kigrade hadi saa hii ana routine eh hey, alinanga us i think so ndio kuniambia lakini alinambia kwa tabol bali but alikuwa analia kwa hiyo story ilikuwa the girl chal alikuwa kama tuseme tu like unajua misunderstanding kiasi but so think afrika part yenye maybe not all people wana kwa on understand things so they go extra mile maybe akaua no so yeah so nani akaua nani like the boy chal aliwa aliwa dem yake same like story yao ilikuwa like same hidden no no kama the way people see us right now maybe with the smiles but inside what on down yeah kwa ground women are the majority victims but it covers men and women but ilikuwa so important kukuwa na ilo kwa sababu I think about more than half of um, victims of or instances of gender based violence result in the death of the partner. Yeah. Sile rights Maputo protocol in a protect na one of them ni um, protection against sexual and gender based violence na ta Kenya tuko na law in a prevention prevention against prevent prevention against gender based violence ndio ni lo tuseme angeenda ku angeenda ku see aende a report hiyo law ndio ingetumikana kupeleka chali yake sasa alikuwa anapenda uchali yake so aku report aku report na kwamba tumesema aku kwambia juu tungetaka kuchoka kama venye alienda ku see alisema amerepiwa juu ku see ukisema umerepiwa wanafaa wafuatilie na iende kwa polisi sina kaya kusema aku report juu ile alifosiwa because of the trauma mm. that comes with um, an incident like being raped before mtu alikuwa anaenda kwa polisi unapewa p3 form unaenda nayo hosi ndio mm. unafeel ndio mm. unarudisha kwa polisi but now p3 forms ziko available at the hospital at the hospital ndio unaanza so nice. hospitali daktari anakufilia hiyo p3 form mm. so unapeleka p3 form imesaidia a lot of people who are not reporting when mm. they've been raped kwa mm. sababu utanza na polisi uende kwa polisi unapata ni polisi mwanaume yako hapo huwezi anza kumweleza hizo mm. vitu so to fix hiyo it was a system ili kwa shida ya system hakuna mtu mwenye ana look up for boy child hakuna mse mwenye anakaa askize boy child saidi yake unaona it's all about girl child you see so hapo ndo point inaanzia if you want something kuimaliza kui you must see so si yake nini see It's increasingly becoming important to have the discussion of what is the root cause of sexual and gender based violence. But you see the perpetrators yes. are the mm. root cause, right? Mm. Now we're bringing men to the table and to the conversation and saying nini ndio mnatupiga? Nini ndio mnatuua? And we answer the question marks why? why? What is the issue? What nini? And so we know a lot of times young women and even girls are sometimes in those situations forced maybe to get an abortion do you know of someone who's opted yeah. to get an abortion um, either be- for different reasons yeah i know of one he was in form 4 and she lived with the with her aunt and uh, her aunt is a pastor so because of the discrimination Religion, yeah. yeah so she had to to do an abortion but it was successful from my uh, definition of abortion eh? i think ladies are meant to have pregnancy but the moment where the pregnancy supersedes the health of the lady or maybe untimely pregnancy i think uh, having an abortion is not bad you know yeah i don't think the government also allows that we also have pharma industries that are bringing in products for that so it's not something that is illegal kama mama tuseme sasa hii na ndota si yako shule it happens it happens you can't deny it happens 
hiki hapa kama mzazi huyo mtoto unapaa kumshikilia na umwambie hiyo sio that and not the end of the wound na akikuja akwambie mm. mimi na sound nimekusikia na asanti kwa kukuwa na mimi lakini nataka nataka abosho sasa mimi niko hapo kwa sababu tunajua abosho abosho sio mzuri hapo kuna mambo bili chanzo si ngapi chanzo si mbili mbili kukufa ama kupo kupona do you believe that women have the right to control their bodies their reproductive health to do what they they see fit uh yeah cuz it's my body it's my choice what i do with it it's my mimi to me mimi siwezi kupata abortion for one uh kuna disadvantages ya abortion maybe naweza mu advise twende tufanye abortion then in future aje akose mtoto So to me I would prefer nikae na yeye nimshike kama mtoto wangu umle yeah nimle and then tam advise on how to venye ataweza kujisaidia next stage to happen evo lakini kumwambia abortion yeah ita inaweza leta hata kifo unaona and then who is to be blamed like ila shule nilikuwa nasoma who is to be checked a something funny atukwa tunachekiwa na ile unajua ile kucheck na urine atukwa tunachekiwa urine wanaenda wanapeleka kwa lab they used to finya finya as wanaangalia kama you are pregnant there was a time i remember was in form 2 msichana by the name violet alipata ngabono you used to ukifinya finya hivyo mnapeleka kwa cube fulani and then venye alipata ball akaambia mamake mamake alimpatia dawa alafu akaenda shamba mama kurudi mtoto alikuwa asha asha kufa lakini before kufa baba aliingia kamza what happened then kuelezea akaambia baba what happened imagine mtoto kuelezea tu hivi na akakufa sasa umeona mtoto amekufa marriage ime break wewe pia umeruzi mtoto so it's better even ukae naye hapo kenye unakula wa kule lakini u advise on her if you go and get it done by someone who's not a medical professional lakini sasa medically kwa hospitali madaktari nurses wako na hiyo training wako na hiyo facility lakini challenge imekuwa society bado tunaamini hii kitu ni baya either utakufa ama so inakataliliwa kabisa inakataliliwa kabisa au ikifika ni risk places ati akipata mtoto as in ikipata mtoto itanletea shida then that one will be okay lakini hii nyingine me as a christian hey. <laughs> in as much of the loss in our country some of us still cling to their cultural norms so we need to have a lot of sensitization on the leaders also i know you're forgetting also these leaders are not informed you know we don't choose leaders based on their level of academic or whatever you know so based currently you are you are letting leaders based on their pockets so we need to have a sensitization from the from the national government itself yeah. most 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 in the parliament mm. they, they should be sensitized okay. and even the, we also have other groups like uh, the ngos doing that on the behalf of the government you see personally abortion most of the unsafe abortions are done because one that done the mothers or the, the the victims they feel that they are victimized they do it illegally yeah or they are used they are using unsafe ways of doing it which is which should not be encouraged yes. yeah article 14 of the maputo protocol mandate states requires states to ensure that women and girls have access to safe and legal abortion services as part of their their right to health now looking at sexual and reproductive okay. health but we also see in our constitution under article 26 yes it does provide for Um, access to abortion but with certain qualifi- qualifiers yes, if it brings harm to the to mom, the mom yes. or to the baby mm. but interestingly enough so for the longest time it says if it's a danger to the mother's mom. health yes so for a very long time we assumed that it was physical health but recently the the high court pronounced itself and said that even mental health mm. qualifies as health yes so where a, a woman or a girl feels like carrying on this pregnancy will be detrimental to her mental, mental health, health yes she should be guaranteed access to safe and legal abortion yes you should actually be able to access this at any 
um, government health facility because this is a document that binds healthcare workers to ensure that if a, a woman comes to that clinic or that hospital seeking that service, they should actually be guaranteed um, that, uh, that service. Do you believe that women uh, have the right to inherit equal share of their familial property, regardless of their marital status? I think currently, it is also, that's, that's what's happening in Kenya. We, people have embraced this and it's happening and also, we also support it. Because at the end of the day, I'm a father to a child, a girl child, to a boy child. These are all my kids. They must have equal rights to my property. Whether the girl is married my in another God. family. Getting married to someone is not important to me. What mm. important is that this is my child, this is my daughter, this is my sister. I don't have any problem sharing her property with her. Uyu ambaye hajaolewa na hako nyumbani. Tukimpa mali nyumbani hata kuwa na bidi ya kuolewa. Kwa hivyo utawaona wasio na urithi ama mtu ambaye hana tumaini lingine kule ataweza kuvumilia kwenye ndoa. Huyu mwenye akona mali nyumbani akienda kule apate changamoto kidogo anasema nyumbani kuko sawa urithi wake kama atapata usiwe moja kwa moja isiwe haki yake. Okay? Isiwe haki yake. Isiwe haki. Kisheria. Yeye awe considered na familia. In the family you say you have two brothers and you are there's daughters then wana wasichana wanaonekana hawavai kungaiwa shamba so long as you zaliwa hata kama umeolewa uko na right ya ya mali ya uko na right na hata the law yes sheria hata yeah. sheria inasema yeah. inasema right. right. lakini akipewa iwe ni haki moja kwa moja inamuondoa kwenye ndoa na ina ina mkosesha ile kujituma kwenye ndoa mwanamke ni wa kuolewa na mwanamke akisha olewa anakuwa mali ya mumewe mali ya mumewe ndiyo inakuwa mali yake one thing we are, we are trying to forget you no know, as much as we are discussing about the mabuto protocol we also have to understand that where we come from we have environment we also have laws we also we have both laws and bylaws we also have cultural norms that have dictated how women have been pursued in the society for so many years. Yes. Let me just highlight a few. One is on the inheritance of property. Mm. In some other cultures, women are not allowed to have property, but it varies from one culture to another. Mm. After giving those birth, you are total water, my husband passed away. And like me, I was mourning my husband. Na kumbe hawa in-laws now, wana kimbia kule kuchukua, kusign. You know, you're supposed to be there, mwini ukipele kwa ndani na mwini ukitoka. So there was like, mi na, mi na mwona hapa, na kumbe mtu mwingine akidi yake ikombadi kwa mani. So yu, yu, yu doisha inifajikia na nirinu, na nikitu very painful. Mwanamki akisha olewa, mali ya mume wake ndiyo inakuwa mali yake. So tukienza na maputo protocol, kuna right to inheritance. Yeah. Na yu ina, 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 ina yongelele itu wasichana na wabulana wanafaa wariti the same, but pia inaongelelea na pia the right of widows, that the wife, the, the widow, has the right to inherit the property of her husband mm. and to keep the custody of her children, mm. period. So Article 21 ya Maputo, mm -hmm. inasema, a woman and a man shall have equal right to inherit their parents' property. Law of Succession Act, inasema the same. Na kwa Law of Succession Act, watoto hawaoni, Either toto wa kiume, toto wa kike, sheria inaona wa toto. Would you vote for a female president? Personally, I might. But then I don't feel she will win and I like winning. I don't feel like she will win because I read a book. Uh, uh, was it Blossoms of Savannah? It's actually a set book that has been given to schools in this nation to read as a compulsory set book. Mm -hmm. And there is a sentence, and I want to quote it, women as their own enemies. So women actually don't have a problem with women, but then women as their own enemies. Well, one, I'll vote her because of her ideologies, because of what she is in for, because actually some women leaders make sense, but others do not. I don't want to mention names, but even in this country, 
we've seen a number of them misbehaving in those offices. Well, I don't mean that men do not misbehave. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. But well, some have done some explicit jobs in this nation. The reason as to why she cannot win, it is because of women. You have clearly showed us uh -huh. that Maputo Protocol has a lot of work, of to, work do. to do. Yeah, yeah. And we're as in we the speak, right place. Yes. We're in the right place. These are things to ponder on, right? Thank you so, so much for your time. So now you know, you can go educate your friends, your yeah. family. Thank you so much for your time. Implementing this article will move us closer to the aspirations of the African Union's agenda, 2063's vision of fully empowered women with equal access and opportunity in all sectors of their lives once all African states fully comply with their duties under the Maputo Protocol.